Assalamu alaikum and good evening. Welcome to Vision 2030. My name is Anam Chowdhury and I'm the host of this show. This program is a community development program by the Channelers working in partnership with the Bangladeshi Regeneration Council with the vision that by 2030 the Bangladeshi community should no longer be uh, considered as a disadvantaged uh, community in UK. In our previous episodes we looked at uh, the migration of our community here in UK. We also uh, looked at the the role of young people uh, in, in the development of our community and we also looked at the role of community sector in terms of helping the community to move forward. Um, today we'll be specifically talking about the role of uh, Bangladeshi women uh, in community development and we have with us three uh, highly respected and qualified guests uh, uh, with us today who will be talking um, not only about their empowerment uh, but also their role that they have played in empowering and developing the Bangladeshi community over the last many years. Uh, viewers uh, thank you for joining us today but also please join us on Facebook and also there is a number on the screen that will come up a bit later on please call in you can join in uh, with the discussion of today's uh, agenda and like I said before uh, we would like the viewers the community at home to be a part of this discussion so that we can work together uh, in moving forward our community for a better future so let's go and um, uh, introduce our guest uh, to the viewers uh, I have on my right uh, Shahida Rahman hello Shahida Thanks welcome so uh, Shahida is an award-winning English author uh, and writer and a publisher uh, Shahida is best known as uh, the author of Lashkar, which she will be talking about a bit later on. Welcome again, Shahida. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we also have uh, Julie um, Livabella. Uh, Julie, uh, hello, Julie. Welcome Hi. to the show. Hi. Uh, Julie is an ESOL consultant and uh, she has over 15 years' experience of working with the community, especially the Bangladeshi community. Uh, Julie has helped hundreds, hundreds of Bangladeshi women uh, to improve their English and, uh, and also a man to be able to uh, uh, be a part of this, uh, the, this society. So her strength has been teaching English uh, to our communities. We also have uh, Maya Ali. Maya is uh, an ex-counsellor from Coventry. Uh, Maya is a principal solicitor. She has uh, uh, with over 15 years of experience. Uh, Maya is also involved as a trustee and a director of a community uh, charity called Sahara in Coventry. So welcome to you all. Thank you very much for joining us today and I'm very much looking forward to having a good uh, discussion with you uh, in, relation to in relation to the, uh, the role that the Bangladeshi women have played in, uh, in the development of our community and also look at the, uh, looking at the future as well. So I think before we um, go into much details we want to know a bit about yourselves uh, obviously because you've like I said you have played a significant role not just empowering yourselves but also uh, making a contribution uh, in the community so um, I'll start with you uh, uh, Shahida uh, you've uh, written a book called Lashkar and I've, I've read a significant part of it and it's, it's a wonderful book and you've mentioned um, the role uh, the migration initially when when the people when the, our community came uh, to UK so I want to know a bit more about about it and I want to specifically know about the role uh, that the Bangladeshi women have played in the past uh, in relation to how we uh, move forward our community. Okay, uh, for those who don't know, Alaska uh, is a story about an Asian seaman who arrived in Victoria, London. So I wrote this story because uh, once my mother said to me, one of our ancestors on my father's side was probably Alaska, so I mm. wanted to find out more about it. So. Uh, I did some research and I discovered that uh, there's a lot of Sileti uh, seamen who actually came from East India. They travelled on uh, British steamships, so they're actually employed to ferry back cargo such as tea, sugar, spices. <coughs> and then uh, most of them actually settled uh, in England. So these men actually date back to well over 350 years. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, a lot of people tend to think that uh, Asian men, they first arrived in the 1960s and 70s. Where in fact, they you know, date back to 350 years. It's a long history there, isn't That's it? That's right. So okay. um, these men, because of the way that they were treated on ship, uh, they lived in brutal uh, conditions. They uh, settled uh, in port cities such as London, Liverpool uh, and Southampton. And um, not by their cho choice of their own, because what they wanted to do is 
obviously return home. Mm -hmm. uh, so they settled in, uh, in these cities and they ended up marrying English women because mm -hmm. at the time there were no East Indian women because you have to remember East India mm -hmm. is today is present day Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and this is how these uh, men settled here. Okay, brilliant. Very interesting indeed. Um, uh, Maya, you've, uh, you've uh, I know you are very much highly uh, involved with the community work in Coventry. You've been an ex-councillor and uh, you are very much loved by the community in Coventry. Uh, I want to know more about uh, your, uh, yourself and also um, the kind of work you do in the community. Tell us a bit more about that. Um, I, I'm a principal solicitor. As mm -hmm. I, I'm a, I own my own law firm. Mm -hmm. uh, on top of that, I got involved in politics mm -hmm. and I got elected as a councillor four years ago, almost five now. Mm -hmm. um, I'm an ex-councillor now because I lost by nine votes. But when I opened my own law firm, I found that I did have a little bit of time for myself because I was my own boss mm -hmm. and I started venturing out. Well, actually, people started coming to me and saying, help us out with this event that you know, Bangladeshi community they have mm. uh, Bangladesh Independence Day they mm. have uh, 21st February which is International Mother Language Day so there's lots of various uh, community events um, there's a lot of other projects that community projects that people try and say come over and try and help us out even give a little speech because mm -hmm. as I started studying I, I got married at 16 mm -hmm. and, um, and I was at home for the 10 years onwards then after that, with my children, um, the, after my children were at school, I started studying then. So by that 10 year gap, a gap that I had, um, I was able to, after marriage, I was able to meet the community more, get, into, get to know them, because I was at home. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so in, in that way, people knew me anyway. So they used to come over to me and talk to me and, and ask me if you can help them out. Basically, the, what I'm trying to say is that with me going out and studying, at first there was a lot of barriers, there's a lot of criticisms because I had children and why is it that I'm going out to study? And this is we're talking about 15, 20 years ago. That time it wasn't a, something that's quite common. Mm -hmm. So I did something that was a very unorthodox in the first place. When I did start studying and then uh, I sort of did go ahead and became a bit quite successful, um, I went to Korea. I uh, had a job, then when I opened, initially when I opened my own law, own law firm, I found a lot of time to myself, like I said before. Mm -hmm. So I st it's just helping out. But at first, when I used to go to these events, most of them were organized by, are organized by men. Mm -hmm. I'm mostly of the time, I'm the only m woman there. Mm -hmm. But now, 10 years on, seven, eight years, 10 years down the line, I find that I'm not the only woman now, which mm -hmm. is really quite good. Mm -hmm. and. The other women, they do come thinking, oh, Maya's going to be there, let's go. Do you understand? So they don't feel isolated. But at that time, I was the only woman there. So sometimes, you know, you feel a bit proud that some people, some women who wants to venture out, who wants to, um, you know, do something fun, mm -hmm. a bit ambitious, a bit dream. Uh, fulfill their dream. They can say, oh, if Maya did it, then why can't yeah, I do it? So there is a lot of, yeah, so there's a lot of, by seeing you there, yeah, your presence has yeah, given that empowerment. Given that empowerment. Yeah, I've, I've had people who've come up to me and said, Maya, I've actually enrolled on a nursery nurse course mm -hmm. and I'm doing quite well. And what she said to herself is that if Maya can do it, why can't I do it? And okay. you know what? That feeling when somebody says that to you, mm. it's so it's immense it's, it's so great yeah. you know I, brilliant i can't yeah. explain that feeling when somebody says it to you that if you can do it maya then why can't and i'm thinking why can't i do it and mm -hmm. when somebody says that to me i said right go ahead you know you will be able to do it because i've had somebody with my cousins because I, I stayed over at last night at my cousin's house and her sister-in-law said there's no such word mm -hmm. as will do mm -hmm. you know i am and i will be doing it yeah. You know, I, I am to do it. Do you understand? Brilliant. It's very interesting. No such thing yeah. as saying no. I, sorry, no yeah. such thing as I will try. Mm -hmm. You have to say you will. Okay. And you am, and it's you a are po willing. Positive attitude. It's a positive. It? Lovely, yeah, lovely. That's well, it's very interesting, and thank you very much for sharing that with us. Um, Julie, um, you've, you, uh, I've known you personally for many years. We work mm -hmm. in the same uh, institution. Um, you've, uh, you've got hundreds of 
uh, students in our Bengali community, Indeed. and, and mm -hmm. your style of teaching is is really uh, extraordinary. And I've 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 met with many uh, women who have learned from you, and they're really pleased the way you teach. Um, I want to okay. know from you, uh, being a, a new, um, from your perspective, um, w what's your relationship with Bangladeshi women? I mean, most of them they start by not knowing the language that you speak. So Indeed. tell us about that interaction that you have and, and some stories about some of your students? Well, I've been teaching now for um, around 15 years mm -hmm. and um, in all of that time I've worked mostly in the communities mm -hmm. with all sorts of communities and cultures, um, Eastern Europeans, um, Pakistani, Indian and of course Bangladeshi. Mm -hmm. And um, in the main, last few years have been mostly with Bangladeshi women. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, basically, my attitude towards um, education is that very often can be very off putting, whatever your origins. Um, if you can't have a relationship with the teacher where you feel trust mm -hmm. and kindness, I think it's very important to be able to share the time together um, almost as friends mm -hmm. rather than um, in some sort of hierarchical position where I'm the teacher and they're the student. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's far better, far better learning experience if the people who come to the class mm -hmm. can feel safe, secure, mm -hmm. respected, um, and that they can feel trust in the teacher, in the mm -hmm. person, and also that they can feel a friendship, because mm -hmm. I feel they will share more with you. Um, mm -hmm. And in so doing, you can get to know them far better. better yeah, um, I know when there's a problem, simply because I know the students so well. Mm -hmm. And although I don't understand the Bengali language myself, uh, or indeed any other the, uh, South Asian languages, um, I can tell by the, the flow of the language, by the, the body language, by facial gestures and so on. It's amazing, really, mm -hmm. how you can communicate with very, very little language mm -hmm. when you, uh, with, uh, from, um, of, of the community that I work with. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. But um, what I've found is that initially when I started teaching, a lot of the um, uh, women would come to classes merely to access language in order to go to the GP or the hospital and so on. And what I've found more recently is that um, a lot of the students are coming wanting English for other reasons. Mm -hmm. They want to um, have driving lessons, they want to pass their driving test, mm -hmm. they want to access ICT, they want to be uh, proficient with computers. Because <coughs> in so doing, that will enable them to access facilities, it will enable them to access knowledge, and as we all know, when you have the access to facilities, when you have access to knowledge, it gives you power, it empowers you, mm -hmm. and life is far better because you can go forward, you can then go on to further education, you can perhaps find employment. It's going to be better for yourself, it's going to be better for your family unit and for everyone else in your wider community. Um, so it's very encouraging mm -hmm. that women are now, as Maya alluded to, that uh, women are now seeking other opportunities. Mm -hmm. Once they put their foot through the door, they mm -hmm. feel that they can, they can do Brilliant. more. Thank you very much for that insight and uh, viewers, um, as I said earlier, you can also join in uh, with the discussion that we are having today by calling onto the number uh, on your screen and also joining us on Facebook as well. Um, one thing I wanted to touch on is um, when we had the initial migration, uh, you talked about uh, not just in the last six days but many years before, but I think uh, often we hear about stories where when the Bengali community first came in, they had to share uh, the same house, the same room with, with other, other families as well. That must have been really difficult for some of our uh, women at that time. Um, have you come across, I mean, um, stories from, from women who, uh, who who expressed that uh, uh, the concern, and also how did they go about um, coming out of this uh, th this barrier or addressing that barrier? I think originally, when uh, these women did come here, for mm -hmm. instance, my mother she mm -hmm. came to Cambridge in 1963, and she was the only person from her mm -hmm. family, on uh, the female person from her family, who actually uh, uh, settled here. So she didn't have anyone sort of immediately around mm -hmm. her. But I think when someone actually came from uh, it was East Pakistan uh, yeah. at the time. The woman's role was within the home. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, to uh, the, my father was the main breadwinner, obviously, and that was the role that most men played. So the woman would uh, look after the children and, and raise them. And I think, you know, obviously, you know, in those times it was difficult because uh, the language barrier, and it's just, you know, remaining in the home and, and raising children. Whereas, Things are changing now. Mm -hmm. Things have changed now. 
Um, I am second generation uh, mm -hmm. Bangladeshi, and uh, obviously my children are the third. So you can see, you know, I've seen the change through um, those times. Mm -hmm. I was born in Cambridge, I grew up there, and how our community has actually changed, and how it's changing all the time. So mm -hmm. I think it's society, the way that society is changing, mm -hmm. you know, people change with the times. And mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, I have heard stories that some women did obviously struggle, mm -hmm. and it was quite common for uh, all Bangladeshi yeah. women and regarding the in-laws, they would all live in one house. Mm -hmm. uh, but in this day and age, obviously you can't have two families mm -hmm. living in one home and it, it, it does get difficult. Of course, uh, okay. But in those days it was acceptable, you know, it, mm -hmm. w it was just normal for them. Yes. And it yeah. wasn't fought anything It was a struggle so though, wasn't it? It, it was it a must struggle, have been really yes. A struggle. And I think also in that generation where um, they took these struggles mm -hmm. and they didn't complain, that's mm -hmm. something. And uh, it, it was just, at that time that yeah. you know th this was happening and uh, mm. people had to accept that. So I mean it takes a lot of strength and energy for for women to be able to bear those uh, struggles and and difficulties. So um, Maya I mean in terms of uh, there is a, a large number of uh, Bangladeshi community in Coventry uh, I'm sure and uh, so when you come to when, when these events that you mentioned earlier this lot of event do you find that our elderly um, ladies are also taking part or do they like to just stay at home? So how are the elderly communities' interaction with the communities these days? Actually, it's just a, such an interesting question because mm -hmm. I've never... I've always thought of taking my mom mm -hmm. to these events, and I do take her sometimes. Okay. But from my mom's point of view, it, mm -hmm. it's for her, she's, she'll have to sit down okay. and watch the event. <coughs> and whether she's got that time, mm -hmm. whether she wants to, and I don't really want to force her either, mm -hmm. Some, some elderly women, I've, I have an auntie, mm -hmm. I call her Ch Ch Chachi, and she's, she's almost like me actually. She's vibrant, she's very electrifying, she's mm -hmm. very dynamic. Mm -hmm. She loves going out and, and she loves dressing up. She, if I took her to parties, mm -hmm. or events, sorry, she'd love it. Mm -hmm. So I suppose it depends on what personality really. Mm -hmm. Like somebody who's my, who, like my mom, she's very quiet, very serene, very reserved. She might not want to go. She'll probably, if I ask her, come with me, she'll probably go just for me mm -hmm. because I want her to go and she'll, talk, she'll just take So do, do you think that we tend to assume that our elderly mothers or aunties yeah. would like to stay at home or uh, is that an assumption that we make uh, rather than they would like to go if the opportunities were given to them? I think if, if the opportunities were given to them, mm -hmm. which there are, I mean, they can go if they want, but most of them don't go because they think there's going to be a lot of men there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's another barrier. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, I'm not bothered if the men are there. I've ne I never have been bothered about men being present. I in fact, I quite like it. Mm -hmm. But with, uh, there's a lot of women who are quite, they're just, they're, they're they, they look on it as mm. a distraction, yeah. as I something th th that's quite I, a barrier. Yeah, the reason my I mom often would mm. say, sorry, yeah, yeah, mom say, you know, you know why, there's going to be a lot of men there. And I said, why, mm. why not? Just come. I think it's more of a social thing. Yeah. If someone has been social all their life, then mm. obviously that doesn't go away very quickly. Mm. Um, you know, I do take my mom to events and that sort of thing. But I think because of her age, you know, obviously she likes the peace and quiet. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on the individual. individual. So you can't sort of generalise that, mm -hmm. you know, all elderly Bangladeshi yeah. women yeah. want to stay yeah. at home. Mm -hmm. It's you know, more it namaz time as well, because yeah. it isn't the evening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She thinks she's going to miss out three namazes in a go. Yeah. Yeah. You can always yeah. do your namaz wherever yeah. you go and you take that with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. As you say, you can't generalise, but um, I, I know from my experiences that there are students who will <coughs> um, share confidences with me and they will say, for example, um, that they would like to do whatever it might be, but they can't because their mother-in-law doesn't want them to. That is, there is another factor, but we're talking yes. about the elderly ladies here. Yes. They are mother-in-laws. Mm -hmm. mm. So I, either they will have a choice of going, mm -hmm. they're not, they don't want to go because of the, probably don't have any energy, yeah. or the, there's a namaz factor, mm -hmm. or they want, don't want to go because they think that their daughter-in-law will follow them, I don't know. Okay. But um, that, that is a, another yeah. factor, thinking if I go out to this event, then mm -hmm. my daughter-in-law or my daughter or my son, they will come and follow them. They probably want their, their home knit mm -hmm. as a home. Uh, they don't mm -hmm. want their, their children or their daughter-in-law to step out. Mm -hmm. That is another factor, which... Yes. Um, 
the, you've the just reason, touched on. The, the reason I ask is because the elderly members of our community have a significant role in making the decisions within uh, within the family life. And I personally have found even my mother, uh, you know, she's very uh, outgoing. She wants to go out. She wants to see the world. Perhaps, you know, we talked about the fact that previously when they were growing up with the family, they haven't had the opportunity to see the world mm -hmm. as we see it today. So perhaps I find many often that some of the elderly uh, women that I communicate with, they want to be uh, out in the community, they want to be a part of the overall society because often they have missed that opportunity in their younger <coughs> days. So I think one of the things that I would like to say to, my, to our viewers is that um, uh, you know we need to respect uh, our obviously elders without a doubt, but we also we need to encourage them because it's, it's yes. better for their health, it's better for their mental uh, and psychological well-being as well. So wherever we can, we should be able to encourage and take our mothers, our grandmothers, our aunties, to, you know, to parks, to seminars to conferences, whatever uh, we can, so that you know their well-being is also uh, improved. Um, we will be going for a short break uh, in a minute, uh, but before I uh, do go to the short break, I just want to remind our viewers uh, that we will be talking uh, in the segment two, we'll be talking about some of the key issues uh, that the Bangladeshi women are currently facing um, uh, 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 in, in, in this country. Uh, that's from within and also from the external environment. But in terms of concluding this uh, segment of our discussion is uh, is that what we what we're saying is uh, that you know Bangladeshi women they have made a significant contribution in building the families uh, and this is why we are here today you know you know we got educated uh, we are healthy because of their contribution so do you want to add something to uh, to that in terms of how we can more be aware of their needs I mean they're elderly people now so what can be what can we do to be more aware of their needs and aspirations that they have I think the number one point is ask them ask talk them. to them we shouldn't assume that they mm. would want something because we think it's good for us and mm -hmm. it's good for them. Let's talk to them. Okay. There are a lot of elderly people out there, you know, mm -hmm. who do want to get together mm -hmm. and, um, for instance, when it comes to weddings and they all get together and they like to talk about old times and that's very good for them. So, as I said, you need to ask them what they want, they want and to. not, you know, force our own op uh, opinions and our decisions on them. Yes. Brilliant. Julie? Mm -hmm. Yes, I would agree with that. After okay. all, they were young people once, weren't they? Yes. They were in our shoes. And we'll be um, like that at some point, I think. <laughs> so it's very important, yes, I would agree with that. If, you, you if, have to you're, close, if you're close to your elderly, then mm -hmm. you'll, sometimes when you, the relationship makes you telepathic towards them anyway. Mm -hmm. You'll know what they want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I used to take my grandmother out in, in her wheelchair, and she used to love it, because mm -hmm. she was quite um, bedridden. Um, but uh, by, towards the, uh, near her, when she, before she died. And I, I used to sit her on the wheelchair and I used to walk, um, walk around with her in, a wheel, in with her in her wheelchair. She used to love so much that little piece of part of going out. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I used to ask her, I said, right, you want to sit in the wheelchair and I'm taking you out now. She used to love it. Love it yeah. <laughs> but if I, if I asked her, do you want to go? Okay. She'll say no, only because she doesn't want me to go through that effort. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank you very much, uh, our honourable guest, uh, for this lovely discussion. Uh, we're going to go uh, to a short break, and like I said, when we come back, we'll be talking about some specific issues that are facing uh, the Bangladeshi women in this country. So we will be back. Join us back. Thank you. Welcome back to Vision 2030. My name is Anam Chaudhary and I'm the host of this show. Uh, we've been talking about uh, the role of Bangladeshi women in the development of our community uh, and we will continue to talk about um, the, uh, uh, the, the, the subject but in this segment we want to talk about some of the key issues uh, that's affecting uh, our Bangladeshi women in this country. Uh, but before you go on to the subject I just want to introduce our guest again. We've got Shahida Rahman who is an award-winning author uh, and, uh, and a writer and a publisher. We also have uh, Julie, uh, who is an ESOLD consultant uh, from West Midlands, and we also have with us Maya Ali, a, uh, an ex councillor and also a principal solicitor from Coventry. So, once again, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, uh, 
what I said earlier, we talked about um, uh, the role of women in terms of the starting of our communities in the past uh, many decades. But what we want to talk about now specifically is about some of the core issues because um, um, as, you, as you know that the KC report recently uh, been published into that last year, I think, uh, and it highlight, highlights some of the uh, really concerning uh, statistics really. I mean, 58% of Bangladeshi women mm -hmm. says it says that they're unemployed and also the Bangladeshi community including the Bangladeshi women have some of the lowest level of English language proficiency uh, in comparison to other communities. So when I read the report it was really concerning really it's alarming that how uh, although we've made uh, we have made some significant uh, improvements but when it's when it comes to comparison our community remains uh, disadvantaged uh, um, out of out of other community compared to other communities so I want to ask you Saida because um, you've, you've you've looked at the report mm -hmm. and I think you've written uh, about this report uh, um, and the mainstream uh, newspapers so tell us why why, why are we remaining uh, deprived and disadvantaged especially in comparison to other other communities okay. well I have to mention one where we haven't really mm -hmm discuss is the word empowerment okay okay this is why we're here we're talking mm -hmm. about how to sort of empower women mm -hmm. and the only way to do that is through education mm -hmm. that's where it starts so I think with um, the report that you did say uh, it says 40 percent of uh, Bangladeshi British Bangladeshi women aren't in employment mm -hmm. um, and that's actually shot up from 11 percent uh, okay. in 2012 now the reason could be and the reason is uh, um, likely to be uh, when women are actually they're married off mm -hmm. um, their lives change obviously so mm -hmm. they're going into their in-laws home and I think a lot of them don't develop their career mm -hmm. are not able to develop their career or further their career okay. and that is uh, a barrier uh, for most women and then they end up you know they have their children and then they have their families to uh, look after I know every woman, obviously, when they are married, they want to have a career. They want mm -hmm. to do something in their life, especially if they've been to university and they don't want that talent to go to waste. Mm -hmm. But I think the main issues is the issues in the home. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about women's issues here today. Mm -hmm. It's not just about women's issues. Mm -hmm. it's, it affects everybody. And it's also to do with men as well, because they have a part to play to allow their women to actually go out and, and develop their career. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, w we can talk all day about women, but, you know, obviously the issues are at home. And if, you, okay. if these issues aren't solved at home, mm -hmm. uh, then obviously, you know, we can't further that. And that's something that needs to be dr uh, addressed. There are some subjects that we won't talk about, you know, mm -hmm. the taboo subjects, obviously, within our own uh, communities, uh, Bangladeshi community. but. You know, obviously, education starts at home and the learning starts at home. Mm -hmm. And we also need to look at whether we're also allowing our daughters to take unconventional careers, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Something that we might not uh, agree ourselves. I think when it comes to careers, everyone's looking at you know, becoming solicitors or doctors or, <coughs> or accountants or something like that. But what about those young girls who want to do something you mm -hmm. know, slightly different? Are we allowing them to actually pursue that? I mean, if we don't give them a voice, mm -hmm. who is going to give them a voice? Okay. We all say that women, you know, they need to come out there and have that voice, but we need to help them to get that voice. And I think, you know, as I said, it starts within the home okay. and we all need to help each other. Okay, that's great. Um, that's very empowering. Uh, Maya, you mentioned about um, earlier in your conversation, you said that there's a lot of other women that get empowered and encouraged by the role that you play uh, within, uh, within the community. So uh, why do you think they're not already empowered? What, what issues are they facing? Like um, Shahida said, yeah. that it, most of, the, I think 70% of mm -hmm. women or shall I say 60 to 70, mm -hmm. it's at home. Mm -hmm. It could be children, looking after the kid children. It could be issues like in-laws, mm -hmm. husbands. Mm -hmm. So what they think is that if they do venture out and pursue their dreams or mm -hmm. try and fulfill their ambition, mm -hmm. study and, uh, and, and try and see if they can um, make a career of themselves, mm -hmm. they actually think that is being selfish of them Okay. So they've, they, they actually stab that de desire mm -hmm. and, and they carry on with their home duties. Okay. They think if my husband <coughs> is not allowing me to study or allowing me to go to work, then it's no point rocking the boat in the house, is it? Okay. Can, uh, I, can I just also add this point, that it's not just about the in-laws and the husbands not allowing their woman mm. to go out. 
some of them cho choose to stay at home yeah. because they can't judge uh, juggle a, a full-time mm. career Brilliant. and uh, uh, you know household it's tasks. very I interesting yeah, I was so going to come to that uh, yeah. no no no, know, men, no, no. Uh, I was coming part. to that mm -hmm. yeah. I also have I know a lot of people in the community mm -hmm. who have the opportunity mm -hmm. to come out no. But they just wouldn't want to come out. They we have a caller on the, on the line, so okay. can we take the, the caller then? Uh, hello, caller, what's your name and where are you calling from, please? Hi, Assalamu My name's Saida. I'm ringing from Tipton. Hello, Saida. Welcome and to I the show. I thought I'd contribute a little bit to your show. Yes. Um, in, obviously, in terms of um, the women. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, carry on. We can hear you. Say that. Okay, that's fine. Okay. So, in terms of like uh, women and and why they they don't sort of participate as much, I I have. I mean, there's several reasons. Okay. I would say that one of them is is still women uh, sort of lack confidence. Okay. And you won't believe it, regardless of how um, high position you hold, you still women tend to lack less confidence than men, and okay. men are confident regardless. Okay. Um, even you know when it comes to job interviews or, or anything they want to do, they're, they're quite confident. Women need that push, even if they've got a, a you know they're in a good role model figure as well. Mm -hmm. And the other reason is they are the main carers for the family, mm -hmm. whether it's children, their parents, or the in-laws or the husband. The wife just feels responsible that she, you know she's responsible for all of them, mm -hmm. and and sometimes sort of gives up or sacrifices. Um, her own sort of desires or aspirations mm -hmm. for the sake of the family. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and the other thing is, is basically that, um, you know, they, they, they don't have a lot of role models anyway in the Bangladeshi community. Okay. Although we're there, mm -hmm. I don't see... Um, there isn't as, as many role models as I'd like to desire. We'll mm -hmm. see. So, you know, it is the encouragement that I think that the women need. Okay. Brilliant. I, I, it's a very good point that uh, you make in terms of you know lack of uh, confidence and uh, and also uh, looking at other role models as well. So uh, I think in terms of uh, the uh, the issues around young women, Saida, obviously uh, their expectation is uh, is is not as same as the expectation of women that we had in previously. So what difference? What do you think the young women are finding um, difficult um, in the current climax? I mean, the same thing, I'll say younger, you know, Bangladeshi females or Muslim females, there is a lot of, um, there's a, a lot of, um, I think the, the, sometimes they'll have this cultural barrier that's okay. there, it's okay. still there. Okay. Uh, regardless of, you know, you've been born in Britain or UK, mm -hmm. uh, there is a, the barrier is there to say, oh, you're a Bangladeshi woman, you've got to act like somebody different. Okay. And that, that's one of them. As yeah. well as, um, you know, they have the, you know, the young women are quite ambitious, mm -hmm. but they don't have the support still. I don't okay. think they have enough support of the parents to say, Okay. You know, you could be just as good as a, a lad or a boy. Okay. Um, I still think that some of our communities still differentiate between girls and boys. And yes, okay. in this day and age, that shouldn't happen. But a lot of things happen in this day and age that you'd be shocked about. Um, yeah. In all communities. So the issue you're really uh, touching on is the cultural, the issues that we have within our families, isn't it? I mean, in terms of the the barriers <coughs> outside that can be tackled, but unless the issues within the within the homes are not tackled, then issues outside will remain uh, uh, bigger barriers. So thank you very much, Saida, for taking part uh, in our discussion, and we really appreciate your contribution. It's a very interesting topic and close to my heart, anyway. <coughs> women's development. Thank you very much. Thank you very much thank for you. your call. Thank what? you. If, if I'm allowed to speak, yeah. There's one. There's, there's another. Um, I've come across where, in a family, mm -hmm. the husband is a breadwinner. Mm -hmm. He earns. I mean, he could be earning very good, has a very good income, or even a, what the income that he he earns is enough sufficient for the mm -hmm. family to to be fed and and, mm -hmm. and clothed. And the wife actually becomes comfortable with that. Okay. A lot of women do become comfortable with that. Yes. Even though they want to mm -hmm. go out there and, 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 and drive and pursue their ambition, they just don't want to because they just don't want to get into that yeah. um, step foot outside the, uh, the, their home, the okay. comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of women who actually don't want to step outside mm -hmm. yes. their comfort zone mm -hmm. unless they're forced to, mm -hmm. either by their friends mm -hmm. or their husbands mm -hmm. or their parents.
Yeah. Um, I know that when I started studying, my dad didn't want me to study. My mom said, the first thing what my mom said is, why do you want to put through yourself through all this? Mm. You know? So <coughs> I'm using my mom as an example mm -hmm. where there are other women who would say the same thing to their children, mm -hmm. their, their daughters. And, but even though, you know, you just have to, you can't tell everybody's individual in the community, in the, in, yes. in, in the whole world, actually. Okay. So one has, one who doesn't want to step out the house, they will have a lot of reason. I mean, not, we're saying the in-laws and the husbands and the children are a barrier, but to another, it might not be them. Mm -hmm. It might be yourself, yes. you know. Yeah. You want to, <coughs> but you, do, you want to go out there, but you just don't want to leave that comfort zone because mm -hmm. your husband's earning enough for you to feed and clothe on, yes. yeah. you know. So... In my experience, um, I can see things from, from all angles, really. Yeah. Cause as you say, I've come across women who are, as you say, comfortable in as much as they accept the situation as it is without venturing forth. Because as our caller said, perhaps they lack the confidence to go beyond their comfort zone. And equally, there are those other um, students who don't feel able to take a bus to a class because mm -hmm. they, it's not perceived to be acceptable for them as single females or females by themselves going off on a bus, public transport, so they don't venture out in that sense to a class. Mm -hmm. um, or as you alluded to earlier, um, Shahida, there's childcare issues, looking after elderly, infirm members of the family who may not want their educated or empowered daughter-in-law to go out mm. and seek a job because that will mean there's going to be a problem with care yeah. of the remaining That's members wrong. of the family. Um, so Can all of these issues that, are there. Um, of course. Shayda, before you add to yes, that, yes, can, yes, we, can we take yeah. another caller, please? Uh, hello, caller. What's your name? Uh, what's your name and where are you calling from, please? Hello, Asalaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Salaam. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. What's your name and where are you calling from, please? Okay, um, my name is Manira. I'm calling from Southport, which is in the northwest. Um, I've been watching the show and I'm good friends with Shahida Rahman as well, so slam to her and everybody on the panel. Yeah, welcome. Okay, so, um, yeah, I, want to talk, I just wanted to kind of make a few comments really about um, barriers that women are facing and, and why they're facing the challenges. I think it's twofold, really. I think... Okay. Quite often, a lot of blame is put on sort of, you know, cultural factors and mm. community. And I think that is a significant factor. But also, you know, there is unfortunately still discrimination within the labour market amongst employers. And I think yeah. things are improving, yeah. alhamdulillah. I think things yeah. have changed a lot. But I think it's, I think it would be wrong just to say that the barriers are within one camp. I think it's a mixture of a different exactly. number of factors, really. So that was just one point I wanted to make, because I think that was something I was talking about quite recently about, you know, we see a lot of educational success amongst our young um, mm -hmm. um, Bangladeshis and young Muslims, but that's not always translated into um, labour market success, so they're doing very well kind of academically, but then th there isn't that sort of same result in terms of the job market. So, um, as I said, I think it's a twofold thing, and I think there's kind of work that needs to be done on, on both sides. And one thing I am very um, keen to see more of is that there's more awareness amongst career options and mm -hmm. careers um, direction amongst both the young people but also the parents as well I think engaging the parents more so okay. that they can become more aware I mean I was um, I very much echo what um, Shahida Rahman is saying about trying to encourage our young people to consider a range of different career options and not just the traditional careers I actually work as a career advisor myself mm -hmm. so it's something I feel quite strongly about that you know people are made aware of different career options you know okay. outside of the traditional careers and the role models issue as well you know we need to, you know to see more role models we need mentors mm -hmm. you know I've been a a strong advocate of mentoring now for about 15 years and I've run a number of projects within higher education and we need to have people coming out and mentoring our young people and giving them the advice and the support and giving them the insights that they need in terms of helping them to progress um, and move forward. There's lots of networks that are happening within the country, you know, Bangladeshi networks, but, you know, we need to see more of these, these networks um, kind of making more use of, pe of, of the professionals within these networks in terms of mentoring our young people. So, yeah, that was just something I wanted to kind of really add to, to, to the conversation. 
It's, uh, your contribution has been extremely useful and I think uh, you touched on not only the, um, the barriers that we have within but you also talked about the discrimination that still remains in, in many uh, fields. So thank you very much for uh, your contribution and I hope that you will be able to um, get involved with uh, this, uh, this program and also in the long term work towards helping our communities to move forward. So thank you very much uh, for your involvement. Uh, before the call, Shahida, you wanted to touch on uh, some aspects. Yes, I was going to say, we're talking about two sets of mm -hmm. women here. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about Julie, um, some of the women that you come across, these yes. are the women who came just a few years ago to mm -hmm. England. Some, um, yes, and, uh, and they're learning English, so obviously the language barrier is an issue where mm -hmm. when they want to get out and about and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. And then we're talking about another set of uh, women who are uh, educated, born here, mm -hmm. and they get married off, and whether they're able to p pursue uh, a career. So mm -hmm. I think we shouldn't generalise all Bangladeshi yeah. women mm -hmm. can't right. go out there and mm -hmm. uh, get jobs. And uh, just like Amunira did say, there is a lot of discrimination in the job market, mm -hmm. and it's particularly affecting uh, British Bangladeshi women. Mm -hmm. So that's a very good point that she did of put course. across. So, mm -hmm. you know, as I said, <coughs> it, it's very easy to generalise, but we shouldn't do here. Yeah. But yeah. you know what? Sorry, am I allowed no, to speak? No, 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 yeah, carry on. In order to face the discrimination, mm -hmm. you need to take put, step out the door first. Mm -hmm. So stepping out the door is step one. It's that's it's that's easy the main. To say that that's for yeah. To do, but yeah. What if that person doesn't have. No, the no. I'm just saying. To do that. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. Whether mm -hmm. it's hard for them or easy for them, that's mm -hmm. their, That's an, you know, up to the individual mm -hmm. to to face. Once you're after the door and you've got you've got yourself a job. Mm -hmm. Once you're in the job, then you realise there are discrimination in every single sector. Mm. There's discrimination in legal field, there's discrimination in the medical mm. fac sector, there's discrimination in the, in the art world, the, in the art, uh, media. Mm. Mm. There's, there's men all over, I mean, organising um, in, in, in all fairness. You have men in every single sector mm. you go to. And there's discrimination, even the, uh, the wage there's a wage gap. So w it, for women, mm -hmm. there's a, 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 a standard wage in, the, in that particular field. Mm -hmm. There's one rate for women and there's another rate for men, although mm -hmm. they are the same hierarchy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's discrimination. There's always a glass door a woman will be, feel, uh, will mm -hmm. be facing, the glass wall, I meant. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there's always going to be a glass wall. Mm -hmm. Whether you crack it or not, it's a different, different. matter. Mm -hmm. But you can. I mean, look at Angela Markel. She's been a four, fourth time now, mm. and she's done something. Really? If you look at our Bangladeshi, we have Sheikh Hasina, who's also uh, a role model for us. Mm -hmm. She's, she's uh, a prime minister. And you look at England, we have um, the pri prime minister here. She's also a woman. Yes. So we do have yes, role models to look for. Mm -hmm. If you look at Indira Gandhi, she was an Indian, and she's mm -hmm. a role model for us. You look at mm -hmm. Benazir Bhutto, she was a role model. So there are glass walls that you can crack. You. you just have to have that. Like you said, mm -hmm. women do lack confidence. We, you we, just have to have that confidence. We will be talking about that uh, at the third segment in terms of how we'd go about breaking that glass. Mm -hmm. uh, we have another caller. Um, uh, hello, caller. What's your name and where are you calling from, please? Hello, caller. Hello, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, I'm Salik and I'm calling from Coventry. Hello, Salik. Uh, I've got a question for the panel. Yeah, carry on. Uh, basically, I've got lots of friends that live in Coventry. Mm -hmm. And um, I think some of their wives, they don't want to go out and educate or get a job because they feel, because they're religious, mm -hmm. uh, they don't want their wives getting involved with other, uh, the other sex. Okay. So you think that religion uh, is a barrier to women's empowerment? It's a barrier, yes. Okay. So I think, uh, um, okay, so what, what do you think that, uh, is that because that their the husband don't want to um, show or have their uh, women enga uh, engaged with other communities? I mean, what if there is a provision where there is women's only permission, would they still complain? Should, uh, rather than educating just women, mm -hmm. I think we should also educate brothers mm -hmm. to say, look, it's okay for your wives mm -hmm. to go out and interact with okay. the community. I, I appreciate what you said. Rather, there's female organizations, but also there's organizations where women can go out. But I think the brothers need to be educated okay. to be said, look, let your wives go out. Mm -hmm. Let your wives go forward. There are opportunities for everybody. It's not just a male mm -hmm. uh, okay, environment. 
Thank you, Salek. It's a very good contribution, and I think you you, you make a very good point. Uh, it's about uh, you know, like I said, it's from within. Uh, we're, thank you very much for calling in today, Salek. Uh, we have another call on the line. So, hello, caller. What's your name, and where are you calling from, please? Hello, my name is Naz Mim, and I'm calling from South London. Um, I'd just like to say that women, I believe, mm -hmm. that the heart of the community, mm -hmm. they're both vulnerable, yet can, very, uh, can be a very powerful source of developing a community, particularly the youth. Okay. For example, if you engage with women, you engage with families, and you change their way of thinking to become more vocal and assertive, as well as becoming more knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. So in this sense, I believe that women... Um, should be encouraged to um, uh, engage with the community, but that community development happens uh, particularly through them. Brilliant. Um, uh, you, you made a very good point in that regard. Mm. So thank you very much for calling in today. Um, Julie, I want to go back to you. And um, I'm sure you have uh, many of your students who come from, uh, from a wide range of age groups and, yes. and communities. Um, <coughs> when, we, when we talk about issues, do you find that the elderly and the younger generations have different issues to address or they're pretty much the same kind of issues that they're facing with? I think it can depend, as my fellow panellists have said. Mm -hmm. um, I think it does depend on personalities Person. in as much as there are older women who will support their daughters-in-law, for example, and there are equally older women who won't support their daughters-in-law. Um, and they all have various reasons mm -hmm. for their responses to situations. Mm -hmm. It could be uh, a fear of being left alone within the home mm -hmm. on the part of the elderly person or older person. Or um, it might be that another older person, as we've uh, spoken about, wants to see their daughter-in-law or daughter advance and do well mm -hmm. because they, they know from their own personal experience that they didn't follow through with their education okay. or their desires mm -hmm. or their ambitions. Um, as, as Shahida said earlier about, um, about people who've had university degrees, they've graduated, but then they haven't gone on to the careers that they would have wanted. Okay. Um, and as um, our uh, caller said, that um, women, women are prevented in some ways um, because their male partners don't want them to go out and interact. And as he said, you need to perhaps educate um, the men um, not to fear, mm -hmm. not to fear, because ultimately the family grows stronger. Mm -hmm. if, the, if, the, if the wife, sister, daughter, mother is educated, empowered, mm -hmm. the family itself is stronger, the children are stronger, mm -hmm. um, benefits, a better Sorry. lifestyle, a, a, a higher income, all sorts of opportunities become available to you. To them. But you have Once to... Them. You have to look fear in the eye and say, we are strong together okay. as a team. We can do it. Thank you very much, Julie. We have okay. to go, go for a break now, but we will be back. And in our third um, segment, we will be talking about how we move forward, how we move forward uh, in empowering uh, the Bangladeshi women. So please come back and join us again. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Vision 2030. Uh, my name is Anam Chaudhary and I'm the host of this show. Uh, we are talking about women's empowerment uh, and the role of women in uh, community development, especially development of the Bangladeshi community here in UK. Um, we talked about the issues, we talked about uh, aspirations of uh, the women in our community and we're very grateful to our callers uh, who called in and given uh, their suggestions. Uh, I would like to request uh, the viewers uh, uh, if you are at home, uh, please do. You can join us uh, and by uh, calling into the studio and giving your suggestion. Uh, in this segment, we will be talking specifically about um, the the future, the future of uh, the role of Bangladeshi women in developing our community and what their contribution, uh, what kind of contribution they could make, and the way in which they can make that contribution. Um, Shahida, uh, we talked about, uh, there's a caller, Salik, he mentioned about um, some people prevent uh, the uh, women to go out because of religious uh, uh, purposes or uh, religious perspective. So what does Islam say about women's empowerment? Can they, really, can they go out? Can they integrate into the society? Well, we have to remember that there's no gender disparity in Islam. Mm -hmm. So uh, any relationship that everyone has with Allah is... Mm -hmm exactly the same okay. as it's written in the Quran but I think it's Islam teaches us to seek knowledge mm -hmm. and that's with men and women alike mm -hmm. uh, so I think you know it's Islam doesn't prevent women from going out to work but 
um, they need to obviously have that balance between mm -hmm. home life and where it's not being neglected, obviously, mm -hmm. if they have children. Of course, of course. Um, so, you know, it can be done, uh, the both can be balanced, but obviously it, it can be very challenging as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it's, uh, you know, uh, as the brother Salik did say so, it's educating everybody, not, mm -hmm. not just the brothers, it's everybody. And I think with the other elder generation as mm -hmm. well, it's very difficult to make them understand because they're already set in their ways and mm -hmm. it's very difficult to make them see the way that we see our lives because mm -hmm. they had a different, completely different upbringing and, and you know, uh, completely different experiences. Uh, so, you know, again, we all need to sort of help each other. And as I said, it's everyone's issue. It's not just women's issues. We mm -hmm. all need to be there mm -hmm. and help each other move forward because mm -hmm. if we don't resolve these issues at home, mm -hmm you know, where are we going to start? And it's going to be very, very difficult. <coughs> Indeed, and it's, it's, a, it's a very good point. I mean, obviously, Islam doesn't prohibit women um, to seek work or to get educated. It's the way you do it, isn't it? You know, yes, it, that's it's, right. um, So that's, thank you very much for that contribution. Julie, uh, you work in community settings, and, um, and there is a lot of talk about this Islamic terrorism and extremism mm. and, and so forth. But uh, what, what's your view on it, and how can the, the women can play a role in addressing this extremism that is um, sometime affecting the, the Muslim communities? Well, of course, uh, we all know that women mm -hmm. um, in particular do have those wonderful skills of nurturing mm -hmm. um, and being able to, if you like, softly approach certain mm -hmm. topics, certain problems. And um, as um, our caller, our last caller mentioned, women have these skills mm -hmm. and it's so valuable, such a valid thing to be able to go out into the community in a pastoral sense mm -hmm. um, and offer support mm -hmm. and mentoring skills, um, particularly for young people. Um, a young man mm -hmm. may approach a woman in a different way mm -hmm. than he would approach uh, a male, mm -hmm. um, particularly if he has problems of depression and mm -hmm. so on. Um, and evidence suggests that when people become, you know, people become disaffected um, and they, they get marginalised, um, they don't seek help for their problems, we know where in some cases this has led. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's a time to um, support women mm -hmm. in, in the, the aim of helping, supporting and protecting mm -hmm. young people in particular. Okay. Um, it's never been more important than it is at this moment in time. Yeah, so uh, in terms of practically, Mm -hmm. uh, what can be done to empower women? Well, I think, um, as we've all um, all spoken about, it's very important that those language skills mm -hmm. um, are gained okay. um, and that there is that support at home, mm -hmm. that women are supported in going forward um, in various community roles. Mm -hmm. um, and also, um, as Shahida mentioned, if someone wants to become an RAF technician or an RAF pilot, then why not? Mm -hmm. um, but I think there are roles everywhere within the community for women, mm -hmm. um, but they need support in that, okay. um, both from their families, the wider community, um, and hopefully if they get that support with childcare issues, for example, um, then hopefully um, they will have the confidence mm -hmm. to go forward, knowing that they have the support of their families behind them. Mm -hmm. And although it might be difficult in juggling various tasks and various duties, um, when that there's can a be shared, though, that can be shared, that can be yes, shared. Yes, and that's a bonus. Yeah. Um, because in many families in the West, it's 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 a mother, father, and two children. Mm -hmm. Whereas in, in in a lot of um, Asian families, there are many members within the family the unit. Family, yeah. So as you quite rightly say, it can be shared. Mm -hmm. So it's a bonus to mm -hmm. have that facility, if you like. Mm -hmm. So yes, it can only be for good. Brilliant. And talking about facilities, uh, I wanted to ask you, Maya, because you were heavily involved with the community sector and with the with the volunteer <coughs> sector uh, in your area. Um, what role do you think the community and voluntary sector can play in empowering um, Bangladeshi women, or generally women in general? Uh, what role can they play? They can actually play a very major part. Mm -hmm. First of all, I'd like to touch on what Salik said mm -hmm. about the, the religion issues. Mm -hmm. Now, my suggestion to what he said would be, um, or my advice, mm -hmm. is that learn to trust your wife mm -hmm. you need to trust mm -hmm. them okay. that's one of the main thing that the women are sometimes face when they have a negativity from their husband or their brothers or mm -hmm. their dad is that they think that they, w they don't trust their the mm -hmm. women mm -hmm. so that's one thing if that trust issue is actually overcome mm -hmm. then yes in the organize in the outside world mm -hmm. the community 
whether you called it the, uh, the you said the, vo the voluntary, yeah, the voluntary and all, sector, yeah, yeah. all the, um, the community within the paid, like the charitable mm -hmm. sectors. Once that barrier is overcome, the trust issue, the organized, the, the level, the people who actually organize are men. Mm -hmm. Most of them are men. They trust the women to, with particular jobs or particular topics mm -hmm. and tell them to go forth and organize it. Get them to have some sort of roles in that field mm -hmm. or whatever, if there's, um, say, there's, there's lots of events, get mm -hmm. them to, do, to, to actually carry out, do that um, event, carry out, do the timetables, uh, you know, ha, all the various, uh, yeah, various roles uh, that, kind of play, that can yeah. play, they I think can the, play. The, isn't the issue is, uh, like I said, you know, most of the community and voluntary sector organization are men-led, really, yes. and I think there is uh, uh, this issue about giving the women the opportunity to be involved in the decision-making mm. process. And I think in terms of moving forward, I think our community sector needs to open up uh, to our own community, really. Mm. You know, we talk about working in <coughs> partnership with other organizations and other communities, but if we can't open up our own organization to our own communities, how can you open up to other communities? So I, I mean, think, yeah. We have, a, we have a community center in Black Coventry, mm -hmm. which is closed for the last couple of years, I think. Okay. Now that center could have been used for our women, to yes. empowerment for the women. Mm -hmm. We could have had courses there, which like Julie um, runs. Mm -hmm. We could have had uh, courses, we could have had ESOL sessions. Mm -hmm. There's loads of things mm -hmm. for women to come forward, to help mm -hmm. them to come forward, to mm -hmm. benefit them, or even uh, their confidence level. Mm -hmm. But the center in Coventry at the moment is closed. Okay. So this is a main core place where women can act, a woman can actually walk in mm -hmm. without any hesitation mm -hmm. to ask to help them out in whether they want to carry on with the, carry out their desire mm -hmm. ambition but they can't do that mm -hmm. so they have to rely on other so th they've got me in Coventry mm -hmm. and a lot of women if they do feel like they can approach me I'm very more welcome much welcome for them mm -hmm. to come and approach me mm -hmm. say Maya you know I wanted to do this how could I do and I've always made it very mm -hmm. Um, quite clear to all women uh, you know if you have any questions come and ask me because I know mm -hmm. that these places where they can ask questions is closed mm -hmm. we have mosques in Coventry where they actually run mm -hmm. the city Coventry City mm -hmm. mosques organized by men run by men and they are so-called they are leaders they're mm -hmm. seen to be leaders <coughs> of the <coughs> community now yeah. they're men so if a woman has an inner desire Mm -hmm. She feels a bit uncomfortable going to that this organisation read by men. So we really need what we really need is women in the fee in community level, mm -hmm. which I'm grateful that I'm in that level. But mm -hmm. I want women to come and ask me, okay. come ask me we, we also for help. To, yeah, and we also have to realise that um, uh, there are help available outside as well. For example, the local authorities, they in each of the local authorities around the country, they have communities um, um, team mm -hmm. where their their job is really to go out there and work with the communities, hard to reach communities. So I think, you know, when we have uh, women, Bangladeshi women in, uh, in different areas, and if you feel that you want to be a part of community life, you want to be a part of uh, this, um, uh, in, in, introducing new services for your community and others, then I think I would encourage you to get in touch with your local authority, community uh, services team, and I'm sure in each local authorities in the country, they have a team who will be able to come down and speak to you and, and, and receive your ideas and suggestions and help you to di uh, to uh, really work, get you to work with the local community organizations uh, to create your own projects and, and support. So what I'm trying to say is the support is out there. It's about empowering ourselves uh, to go out and seek that support. Um, yeah. um, Julie, do you yes. want yeah? to oh, I just wanted to add also that um, I think it's quite, um, it can be generalized. We can mm -hmm. sometimes generalize too much that the men that we speak of, mm -hmm. that we perceive them as being well educated mm -hmm. and confident and so on. Mm -hmm. But uh, for a lot of men, in my experience, they're not educated sufficiently. They have to work terrible shifts yeah. in low paid jobs. Yeah. And what we need is well educated men also from the, the community mm -hmm. who will then be able to support their wives far better. Mm -hmm. um, if a woman 
can't access courses or whatever because she has to be at home looking after the children because her husband's doing a night shift mm -hmm. in a lowly paid job. Mm -hmm. Neither one or the other goes forward. So it's just something I think that has to be borne in mind mm -hmm. that in supporting women, empowering women, men also have to be supported to okay. go forward. Supporting. And that is part of what I was um, sort of discussing earlier, mm -hmm. that the whole unit is a team yeah. and everyone goes forward to access the very best that life can, can yeah. offer you. Yeah, Can indeed. I just touch on one issue here? Yeah. You can't, you know, we're talking about these women and mm -hmm. helping them, but you can't help them unless they help themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, those women, they have to come forward themselves mm -hmm. and say, I want help. Yeah. Sometimes unless they, they, they don't know they, they don't, to do yeah. mm -hmm. And they don't want to either. So yeah. like we said before, we touched on that before, everybody's individual. Mm -hmm. There's women, we could say to the women, who I've got lots of people that I know who sit at home do nothing. Mm -hmm. I could go to them and say, why don't you do something for yourself? Mm -hmm. And they don't want to. Mm -hmm. But then you can't force them. You to. can't force and, them and, to and either. That's their yeah. choice. Yeah. Everyone has an individual choice. When we're saying that women should go out and do something, mm -hmm. they don't want to perhaps. Those who do want to, perhaps they don't have enough information to actually mm -hmm. know who to go to. But as you said, you know, every uh, regarding the, your uh, community centre in Coventry, there's probably more issues behind that regarding funding, local uh, authority funding being cut. There's lots of issues, you know, to keep running a community centre costs money, mm -hmm. and the government have, uh, you know, slashed a lot of funding with all uh, councils. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's not. There are other ways that women can be involved, but mm -hmm. we can't sit here as a panel and dictate mm -hmm. to women say, well, you want, you should go out there and work. I think with all women, they put their family first, mm -hmm. and you know, I do. I put my family <coughs> first before mm -hmm. anything. My children are, mm -hmm. you know, very important to me, and obviously their needs come first, and that, and that's been the case for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And I, and that's the reason why I've always mm -hmm. sort of um, had a career later in my yeah. life because. I wanted to be there for them. Yeah. And there's no harm in that, you know, being mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. home and looking after children. Yeah. And for me, I that's, think, yeah. that's a very important part of my life is, um, you know. That's actually a full-time job. It is, it yeah. is. Looking after a family at home is another job. So women, in fact, they have two jobs. Mm -hmm. if, yes, you're out, if you're outside it, it, in the working field, mm -hmm. you actually, that's a job. And you have another job at home, regardless whether you're working or not. Mm -hmm. That is a job that you, you ensure that, you're, you're, you know, your children are fed. Mm -hmm. You ensure that they're clothes, you ensure they're going to school, that they're in universities. Even though if your children are still at university, you still look out for them. Yes. Yes. That, that's with every community, yeah. not just the Bangladeshi community. No. Yes. Every community has their own issues mm -hmm. and uh, you know, everyone wants their children to grow up to be mm -hmm. wonderful children. Yes. But sometimes society doesn't always allow that and sometimes we shouldn't allow society to, to di dictate our lives as well. Yeah, it's quite Very good yeah. points. Uh, sorry, yes. Julie, I'm going to hold you uh, okay. there. Uh, we have a caller on the line. Hello, caller, where are you calling from? Hello, Smarto. Wa alaikum salam. I'm a student of the government. Yeah, you are a matra of the hookah, naked of the hookah. The matra of the betting to the hookah. Kotoman star signing a nizil takil zaita. Okay. This is our Kotore Tara husband, the Dabayara on Zaita Tenya. Okay. I'm a Kotore Zani. Okay. Take the solution, Kitaf Nikita Monohora. What's the solution? Nizor mind tak to you for like it. The Nizor is a tape. This is what Kayak to Portana. Okay, okay. So, uh, so first thing, oil oje ni jay akta icha takto oje amra gya kuch porta, and then automatically husbands will be able to encourage. Okay. Ar kuch khwara sani afner? Dina ar kuch khwara nae. Okay, thank you very much for calling in today. Uh, I think the, um, right. the 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 lady is making a very good point. It's really it's a two way, isn't it? It's like, you know, if you have to, if you have the willingness. Mm -hmm. You can achieve it, <coughs> isn't it? And yes. every other barrier you're talking about is just a barrier, isn't it? The first point is you, you yourself. Yes, yeah. 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 Confidence yeah. makes you win the game anyway. Mm -hmm. So first yes. of all, she needs to have the confidence to come out okay. and the willingness to do it. So my point, you see, well, what I want to know, how can we develop that confidence? What is it that we can actually do to build uh, someone's confidence? Is it that we need to showcase more people like yourself, you know, to come on TV show and, and, and give yes, your story? That's a start. That's, that's, yes. a, start. Yes. that's yes. a start. It's yeah, like when I go to, to uh, yes. dialogue as well, yes. because, okay. you know, it, that is the number one thing, is education and dialogue. Mm -hmm. When you speak mm -hmm. to somebody mm -hmm. and, you know, educate them, their mindsets can change. So okay. 
I'm not sitting here tonight to tell women you've got to come out and work. Mm -hmm. no. That's not what I'm here for. No, not no, at course. all. But it's just to make people aware that mm -hmm. there are options available. Yes. Society is changing all the time. Of course. But it's about balancing your domestic life and if you want a yes. career. But not everyone <coughs> wants a career. Of we, course. We but I, th I think, I mean, uh, I work in uh, urban regeneration and, and stuff like that. And I think that, you know, the challenges that a family currently have is much greater than the challenges a family had 20 years ago mm. perhaps yes. or yes. 10 years ago because within a family you've got your young children you know the challenges within the young children are great yes. um, the family life the education the barriers everything so it's, it's so much challenges within within our families currently that we have that this is where the role of woman becomes much more greater than ever before yes because okay. I was going to say earlier and um, that um, with regard to women staying at home mm -hmm. that's perfectly acceptable yeah. but it's also necessary if that happens that women are able to speak English yes, or read yes. and write English mm -hmm. because they are there with their children um, they, it's important that they are able to understand what their children are doing, mm -hmm. and in particularly in terms of accessing internet information mm -hmm. or you could have a situation where the parents can't yeah. read or write, the children can, the mm -hmm. parents can't access the internet or information that's there, mm -hmm. the children can, and you, you develop uh, barriers between mm -hmm. children and parents. Mm -hmm. Whereas if English is spoken, if access to knowledge is within the family unit, then it should, that family unit should stay, stay strong, mm -hmm. that bond should stay strong and secure. Twenty years ago <coughs> when I started studying, mm -hmm. I had members in the community, some people, even the close members of the family, said that, why, they said to my husband, mm -hmm. why are you allowing your husband, your wife to go out there and study? She will go run off with a man. Mm -hmm. You know, there was trust issues mm -hmm. within the family unit, but my husband was supportive. He's always been a barrier, sorry, uh, a pillar to me. He still is, mm -hmm. you know, and he's, he, He's never ever faltered in his trust tilted it till to date. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a, an issue that I faced mm -hmm. when I started studying 20 years ago. And I'm sure now women are probably more lenient and they won't probably say that to, the, to their um, family women, fellow uh, relatives who are women in the family. Now, there's a stigma mm -hmm. when women go out and they, like I go out and there's hundreds of men and eight, ten, nine years ago, I was the only woman. Mm -hmm. Now I'm amongst few women. So the women have grown now. Mm -hmm. But even then when I used to go out amongst those hundred women, I had somebody calling me up and said, how come you know, you're the only woman there in mm -hmm. amongst a group of hundred men in the room? Mm -hmm. And I said, why not? If I'm the only woman there, it means I'm representing 100 women. Yeah. And yeah. that one person, me, I will encourage the other women to come up, join me, which I have. In, I, have now, I now go to events and I have women. I, I'm not the only one, I'm so proud of that. Mm -hmm. Because I say, say to myself that at least I've encouraged a few women to come out mm -hmm. and join me. And I want few other women, and that, you know when you say, mm -hmm. You know how you say, how do you will help? Mm -hmm. Do we have programs like this to mm -hmm. get women out? Yes, that yes. does help because what we're saying to them, somebody who's watching touch this show, can, if you could actually help one of these women out of the billion women out there, we've, d we've done our job, haven't we? Yes. Yeah? Yes. And if, if I go to an event and I'm the only woman there, maybe now there's few women there, and if another woman from the home says, if Maya can go, if this person can go, if that person can go, why can't I go and join them? Let, mm -hmm. let me go on as well. Then they, that is in itself a help yeah. that you've in, that, that inspirational help is what you what I really want, Brilliant. and <coughs> and I and I actually thrive by that, mm. you mm -hmm. know. Um, we will shortly be closing the program. Uh, we're coming to an end, uh, but before we go, I um, would really want some um, good advice from you guys. You know, I want you to um, give advice to our audience in terms of what practical measures um, that they can take and adopt uh, in terms of improving and empowering themselves. I mean, you are a great example of uh, uh, of a Muslim Bengali woman who've, 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 who are in um, who've, who've made a success in terms of. Uh, being an author and a publisher and working in the mainstream. So we want more women like yourself, you know, to be, uh, uh, to govern our communities and, and also to lead our families. Uh, so what advice and direction would you give from your personal perspective? 
uh, I have to say my journey wasn't entirely easy. You know, yes, we all have our challenges. Um, uh, very it took shortly, me years to shortly, uh, yeah. uh, get published, but I think it's, it's patience, persistence okay. and perseverance. And I think we can't keep dwelling on the past. Okay. You know, things are moving forward. We need to look ahead and see what we can do and how we can improve our lives. Okay. Ten years ago, life was different. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, it's finding the right people to talk to mm -hmm. and actually going out there and finding the right information. Mm -hmm. I just like to encourage the audience, you know, please get in touch with me mm -hmm. if you ever need any advice. Um, and I'll be happy to help and advise in any yeah. way. You will just Google uh, Shahida Rahman, yeah. you will see her website and uh, yeah. you, can, you can email her for, for personal advice. Yeah, thank you very much, Shahida. Julie, uh, your advice and recommendation? Um, well, I believe that language is power. Mm -hmm. And um, once you have access to language, you can access all sorts of facilities, mm -hmm. knowledge of all sorts of things, facilities. And basically, once you have that, you can help yourself become a stronger individual, your husband become a stronger individual, and indeed your children. Mm -hmm. You can all achieve far more and far better. Brilliant. Language Thank is all. Much. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. You're welcome. Maya? Well, I'd say educate yourself. By educating yourself, you're a woman. You're educating an institution. Yeah. So the first thing is education. Mm -hmm. Second thing is learn to trust mm -hmm. your partners. Trust them so that you can allow them to go out and pursue. That's if they want to, because yeah. we're not here to say, like she either Force, said, yeah. we don't, we're not here to say, come out, and mm -hmm. study, come out and study, come out and go. It's up to you, the individual. Mm -hmm. So there's help out there, and I'm always willing to help anybody. I mean, mm -hmm. you can find me on website, mm -hmm. uh, if you myencosolicitors.com. I'm there. Email me. You know, uh, okay. why do everybody has my mobile number? Even my clients. Just really? try and see if you know, anybody knows each other, knows me. Brilliant. Try and get mobile. Just call me. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you so much for such an excellent contribution that you've made uh, throughout the evening today. So thank you very much. We're really pleased that you were able to um, uh, come and join us in this show. Um, thank you. Thank you very much once again. Uh, viewers, uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, I'm sure you've, uh, uh, you will agree with me that we have, uh, we have had a fruitful conversation uh, in regards to women's empowerment. And I personally um, would like to encourage uh, our mothers and sisters to, be, to uh, feel confident within yourself. And wherever you need some advice or guidance, the local authorities are there. You know, pick up the phone, Google, you'll find everything in the Google in terms of what's happening locally, what's happening nationally. So, don't feel um, um, isolated, you know, feel empowered. Um, try to find out all the provisions out there which are available and make use of them. You know, the provisions are out there for all of us. So make use of them. Make use of the local council. Make use of the local community organizations that are based in your local area. And I'm sure working together, men, women, elderly, we can surely improve the lives of our community in the future. And by 2030, I'm sure our community will no longer be regarded as one of the most deprived communities in the country. So all the best to everyone. Uh, and once again, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, audience. Thank you very much.